Back in 2012, I conducted some research into the computer security of in-car networks, and with the WikiLeaks release of their latest Vault 7 data dump, boy has this become relevant. The actual WikiLeaks page only makes a single reference to attacking vehicle systems in some meeting notes, so without any information on what work the CIA has actually conducted, we cannot say for sure what capabilities they currently have. But that being said, attacks on cars are certainly possible, and here is how. It is best not to think of a car as a single computer, but rather a network of them. A modern car will typically contain over 70 networked engine control units, referred to as ECUs, connected by up to 1km of copper wiring in order to comprise the CAN network. This network can be accessed via the onboard diagnostics port, which by law is unencrypted. These ECUs control or have a hand in controlling just about every feature of the car, from suspension to steering and from braking to accelerating. Now, cars are actually relatively easy to hack for three reasons. One. They are safety critical, not security critical. Security features take valuable CPU cycles and can cause delays in the network, and this has a direct effect on how quickly a car can respond to input such as steering or braking. Cars are designed to tolerate failure, not attacks. Two, they are never developed with holistic security in mind. Many components do not even conform to their own protocol standards. Three, they cannot receive security updates. This is because they are not connected to the internet, and because the technology in each ECU is low-tech by design. Researcher Carl Kosher found that once he has access to an automobile, he can, through packet sniffing and fuzzing, completely disengage or forcibly engage the brakes, as well as control the engine, the lights, and the locks. He could do this overriding human input. Indeed, in his experiments, he was able to drive the car at a slow pace and then engage the brakes using the laptop he attached without hitting the brake pedal. So to reiterate, attacking a car's computer system to slam or disengage the brakes, overriding all human input, is not only theoretically possible, but practically demonstrable and has been so for at least seven years. Now, as far as I'm aware, the only way to access the in-car network is to physically plug in a device into the onboard diagnostics port. However, in the future, in-car entertainment systems may be connected directly to the CAN network, which opens up the possibility of remote attack via mobile networks. Indeed, in Tesla cars, this may already be the case, as they have self-driving features. Now, whilst a researcher like myself or Kosha would plug a laptop directly into a car in order to attack the car network, once the attack commands to trigger a specific car feature, such as disabling the steering, have been figured out, it would be possible to program these commands in advance into a small dongle that would be able to plug directly into the car port and then act maliciously of its own accord. One final possibility, entirely hypothetical, would be to plug into the onboard diagnostics port and forcibly reprogram one of the engine control units to fail or act maliciously in certain events. This could have the effect of, say, cutting the brake lines on a car, but with only digital evidence to investigate. And after all, the police don't have time to scan 70 car computers for a unique virus every time they investigate a car crash. Make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments and to like and share this video to others and make sure you subscribe for more content.